Good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday evening, and this is going to be my last live of 2020. So I won't be here next Tuesday or the Tuesday after because uh, me and my team are taking a well-deserved break over the Christmas period. So I will be back in the new year with some extremely good content for you. But I am literally winding my business down now for a couple of weeks because I'm allowed to do that. And I'm sure none of you want to see me and none of you want to participate in this. Um, you want to be with your families and enjoy it. And I think nothing, no, no better reminder for that than me just sitting and watching the news tonight. And I don't watch the news. I really don't partake in the news. And it is quite, I suppose, upsetting for a lot of people at the minute here in the uh, we should do this, we should do this, we shouldn't be in contact with people at Christmas. So none of us knows how it's going to pan out yet. So I'm going with the flow um, and easing myself through this period. And I would hope that you will do the same and just enjoy it no matter what it ends up being. Anyway, I wanted to finish the year off. Um, I've been talking about my paintings this month just because it's coming to the end of the year. And I want to make sure that... Um, I'm communicating what I do through absolutely every medium that I use. So that's the reason for me focusing on the paintings this year, this month rather. So for those of you that haven't watched before, hi and welcome. I'm here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And I'm Mandy and I'm a creative genius consultant, an artist and an author. And I help innovative female entrepreneurs to launch, grow and scale their creative business and make more money. And if that's what you want to do in 2021 and you're fed up with 2020 and things have changed for you, then, you know, maybe we should have a chat in 2021. Anyway, tonight I want to share some real value with you because this is a really valuable asset in business that I want to talk about tonight. And it's based on my painting, You Raise Me Up. And the painting, You Raise Me Up, is the one with the cherry blossom and the water lily that most people really love and resonate with. It's my most popular image um, that I've created. That I sell more of that than anything else. And it resonates with lots of women. And it was inspired by um, a networking group called MIBA, Mums in Business Association. And I want to explain why. And tonight I want to cover the importance of networking, of building relationships with your tribe, particularly if you are a female entrepreneur, the importance of building, um, nurturing relationships with other women that help you to grow as an individual and help you to grow in your business because it can be a game changer for your business and for you personally, if you approach this in a way that is open and in a way that is, is somebody that's seeking the growth and the learning that you can achieve from women. And there's a reason for this. Women are very giving in nature, usually nurturing everybody around them um, many are caregivers to children or to family members. It's natural for women to nurture and it's natural for women to want to help and see other women grow and flourish and experience positivity. Now, that's not every woman. And I'm not going to claim that that's every woman. I'm sure that some of you may have had bad experiences with women. And that comes from a place of low self-worth and anxiety and low self-esteem in the person that's projecting that lack of support. So when you meet women, like-minded women, who are also in business, who are entrepreneurs, they're highly likely to want to support and help you. And I want to talk about networking and what it is, how important it is and why it can be a game changer for your business. And there are lots of do's and don'ts in networking, in women's networking groups. There are lots of highs and lows, yeah? And there are lots of things to learn about the power of relationships. So why should you include networking 
in your marketing strategy for your business. That's what I want to explore tonight. And how can that help you as a business owner to develop and thrive in your area of genius or in your market? I think first and foremost, let's look at um, the examples and the proof, shall we? Uh, a couple of years ago, a couple of sisters called Leona and Estelle started up a women's networking group called Mums in Business. And there are now over 60,000 women in the Facebook group for Mums in Business Association, showing that there was a need for women, particularly mums who were at home, to be networking, to, to, to feel like they were part of something bigger than themselves, something that could help and nurture them, something that could help their business to grow. And I am always in admiration of these ladies for creating this conduit, because up until then, networking meetings were very male dominated, very business-like, usually breakfast meetings at 7 a.m. Um, and you had to go along and you had to behave in a specific way. And Mums in Business actually changed this. And since then, lots of women's networking groups have sprouted up. And I think that is a really good thing. I don't think you can have too many of them because we network very differently to men. We work very differently to men in our businesses. Feminine energy is very different to masculine energy. Now, you need a bit of both in business. You need some masculine energy in your business when you're thinking of strategy and uh, numbers and planning and organization. There has to be some masculine energy in your business around that area. It's important. But then... We bring a lot of feminine energy into our business as well. And that's about relationship building and about building your business on relationships. And actually, sometimes women can do an awful lot better than men in business, in specific businesses, because of the power that they have to build relationships and nurture relationships. So here's some of the things over the last couple of years, and I've been to a lot of networking events when we were allowed out, before we were caged animals, a lot of networking events in person where I've gone and been part of the networking event meeting people. I've been to a lot of networking events where I've been a guest speaker, and I've been the one at the front of the room sharing what I do, why I do it, how I do it, etc. And I've done the same online during COVID. So it's a very, very specific part of my marketing strategy to go to regular networking events every month. Why is this? Why do I do this? And why should you do this? Because it gets your business out to a wider audience. And it's not just the audience that you're in front of in the networking event. So whether the event is in online, or in person, there may only be 20 women there. But that's more than 20 women that you are speaking to. It's like everything that you do and every time that you show up, if you can build a relationship with 20 people in a room, they will go and tell, if you make an impact on them, they will go and tell another 10 people about you. So 20 becomes 200 becomes 2000 if you can do it right. So how do you get networking right for your business and build a nurturing business that nurtures others as well? Well, first of all, you've got to show up and you, which is important if you're gonna to go to a networking event. I know what it's like, right? I'm gonna call this out and be really honest about it. You book a networking event and you pay for your ticket and it's the day before and you think, oh, God, I can't be bothered with this. I'm too busy in my business to go and spend two hours at an event and half an hour driving there and half an hour in driving back. I could be doing this in my business. So I'm going to stop you there right now. The time you invest and it's an investment of your time in going to that networking event to meet all those new people there could be an ideal client that you meet or that you meet because of somebody that's there that can pay dividends and earn you much more money than you would have by staying 
at home working on your business. You are opening up new opportunities. Every single time you network in a room of people, particularly with women. It can be difficult if you're an introvert and that you're not very good at introducing yourself to people. But I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Introducing yourself to people, making connections, etc. You know, networking has changed. It's not all about exchanging business cards. It's about building relationships, important um, relationships, supportive relationships, relationships that cause both parties to grow. Do not go to a networking event expecting to sell your products. There's one of the do nots. Do not go with a provisor, with it in your head that you are going to sell your lipstick, your skincare, your makeup, your financial services products. Go and meet the people that are there and genuinely engage and genuinely get to know what they do and tell them what you do. There's some do's and don'ts for you. If you go with the plan that it's to enhance you and your business by enhancing relationships and understanding what people do and getting them to understand what you do, you'll get more value out of it than trying to sell to 20 people. Okay, so nobody likes that. It's cheesy and it's spammy. That's just what it is. There is so much power in the connections that you will make. So I've been going to networking meetings for a long time now, and I have made not only some deep connections with other women, but some really good friendships, some people that I could turn to when I had a problem, some people that have come to me when they've had a problem, some people that have helped me with solutions for my business, for my personal life, and some lifelong friends. And how amazing is that for me taking the time out once a month to go out and go and attend a networking meeting? And I've done it online throughout COVID. I have done two a month through COVID where I've done online networking meetings because it's such a powerful thing to meet people. So what I want to, to do tonight, because it's my last live of the year, I want to give you a sharp prod in the ribs and say, if networking is not on your plan for 2021, you need to have a think about it now and consider why it's not on there and how you can include it in your marketing strategy and in your business strategy for 2021. So how often would it be beneficial for you to go to a networking meeting? And I would say if you're just starting out, once a month is enough to go and meet new people. That's 12 opportunities a year to expand your network, meet new people, exchange knowledge and services with a, a new group of people, but don't go to the same group again and again and again. Change it up. Otherwise, you're just going to meet the same people again and again and again. Where should you go? You should keep it local to you, but look further afield to meet new people as well. So I live in Northumberland. And I go to Durham, to, to Gate, to Newcastle, to Morpeth, um, to lots of different places, to networking meetings. Well, I don't at the minute. I go online. And online, I'm going all over the country, from Glasgow to Manchester to Leeds to Blackpool, all over the place, meeting new, amazing women that I didn't know about before. With who are you going to go? Are you a mum in business? If so, mums in business would be good for you. Are you um, a spiritual or wellness type of um, business? If so, then you should be looking for networking groups that serve your community and your tribe. It's no use being in the wrong place because that doesn't serve your business and it doesn't help you to serve others. So you've got to consider as well who you go and network with. And there are so many out there. Go into... Uh, Facebook search and search groups and look for networking groups, women's networking groups, if you're a woman in business, um, if not general networking groups and find the ones in your area and make a list of the top 10 that you want to go to or the top 12 over the year. This is a market research opportunity for your business and a huge opportunity for your business to grow. 
then how likely is it if you go to that networking group that your ideal client is, client is going to be there? So let's look at, you know, statistics wise. If you have 100 conversations with people on Facebook, it's likely that one of them may be your ideal client and that you may be able to build a relationship that would lead to a sale later on down the line. It's a similar ratio in networking groups. It's likely that if there's 10 or 15 women there, you may have to go to 10 groups before you even come across your ideal client, but you've got to pick the right groups where the likelihood is high that she or he might be there. So if you're a woman in business, and if you are going to female to women led networking events, and your ideal client is a spiritual coach who helps women with their spirituality, and you can help them with their business in some way, then you need to find them. That's your job as an entrepreneur. And then you've got to consider the most important thing is how you will show up. And I don't mean what you dress like, what your hair's like, what lipstick you wear. I mean, how are you going to introduce yourself? What are you going to talk about when you get your couple of minutes introduction? Because most networking meetings have an introduction at the start. And I want you to think about all of those things. Once you've worked up a strategy for that, it enables you to confidently go into a room anywhere and meet new people and be able to network new people because you know who you're speaking to, how you're introducing yourself, what you're going to be talking about. I have to this year say that because of networking meetings that I have attended over the last two years, I have found ideal clients for my signature program. I have been a co-author in a book which has the Get Ready to Rise book, which has the stories of 17 women in it. I have launched and maintained my successful creative business. And I can put a lot of that down to the relationships that I have built through networking, both online, in groups, in networking groups, and in person. It's been a significant part of the growth of my business. But moreover, it's been a significant part of my personal growth. Because I learn something from every single interaction I have with another female in business, because their experience is different to mine. And when you start to have conversations with these amazing women that I have met over the last couple of years, um, it really does start to teach you a lot about yourself, your capabilities, your boundaries, your barriers, your imposter syndrome, all of those things we carry with us as female entrepreneurs, the comparisonitis, etc. And I've selected for me the groups that work for me and the groups that I want to attend again and again and the women that I want to meet. I've made amazing connections. I found my mentor that helped me for a year through her mentorship program through online networking. I have made friends with some of the top names in Mums in Business Association. I can say, you know, I, I consider people like Heather Rose to be friends of mine now and to be connections that are of real value to me. And she's the lead operations manager in the UK for Mums in Business. So it's been about me taking the time out and investing. It's about an investment. Everything in business is about how you invest in yourself and your business. So I invested in myself by hiring a premium coach. I invested in myself by going to networking meetings, by meeting new people, by expand, expanding my network exponentially and, and welcoming all these new women in. So here's some of the warnings I'm gonna give you along the way you are going to find people that may be not your people. 
that's me being really polite here along the way, that may not be your people, that may attach themselves to you, that may be salesy with you, that may be a bit pushy with you. That's okay. That's part of their journey. I see that as my job to take the opportunity to perhaps give that individual some feedback. Maybe they need an arm around the shoulder and a little bit of honest feedback that will help them to improve as an individual and therefore in improving their business. Now, not everybody likes that and that won't work with everybody. Just take that on board. You've got to learn to not take offense at things like that because these things are going to happen and going to come up. But in my experience, and I have, I am living proof of this, to be a co-author in a book, um, I am regularly now asked to be a guest speaker um, at online networking events. I don't even have to look for those opportunities. I'm just asked every month. I do one a month where I'm a guest speaker. And when you're a guest speaker, you have the stage. You have all the women in the room watching you, talking about your business, what you do, and how you help people. You are putting yourself top of mind in the minds of all the audience that are there watching you. And that becomes an opportunity as you start to ingratiate yourself into that community of women. And that's where my painting, You Raise Me Up, came from. From the lotus flower, the lotus flower, that floats to the top of the pond through the mud and the muck and comes out beautiful. Because that's what we do. We rise up through all of the problems in our lives and we are still beautiful. And then my main character in You Raise Me Up is a fierce woman, a woman of knowledge, and she grows into the tree of knowledge, which feeds and nurtures other women. And I create, I made that beautiful by making it a cherry blossom tree. And that, for me, was the visual of the power of building relationships with other women, like-minded women, women who are in business, women who, want your, who have your back and you have theirs, women who can help you along the way. It's important. And here's the punchline, everybody. It's important because people buy from people. People buy from people. Noticed I've repeated that there. I have purchased all of my Christmas presents this year from women in business so that I can invest in their businesses at a time where I would be spending that money anyway. I've done that because I see the power of that community. I see the power of supporting those women and them supporting me. And if you are in business right now and this is not on your agenda, I'm this is your this is your sharp prod in the ribs again. Change it in 2021. Get this on your radar going forward. How are you going to show up in networking in 2021? How are you going to build relationships with your tribe, with your potential tribe, expand your network? to people of value. That's who you want in your network, people of value. People that are of value to you so that you can also be of value to them. I hope that's made sense to you tonight because it's really important and I've chose tonight to share that. And this is when I'm doing my imagery for my paintings, it's interconnected with the work that I do in the community that I create in my business, in my creative development program, with the women that I work with. It's all about nurturing community. It's about supporting each other and wanting each other to grow. So my writing also expands to that. So my book also tells that sort of story and those lessons. Everything I do is interconnected, interwoven, and it's been a tough year for me, guys, this year, losing my husband. There are times where I have not felt like going to be a guest speaker. But once I get there, I'm fine because it's something I've done so often for so long that I'm fine doing it. There are times where I haven't been myself but still showed up. 
and still made new connections. And I want to shout out to some amazing women that I've met in my network that I would never have met if I had not been to networking events. And those women are Sarah Noel, Natasha Holland, who I have worked with in Get Ready to Rise, and who are part of the Get Ready to Rise book, which I've co-authored, and they used my image, Let Her Rise, in there. Um, Leanne MacDonald, who ran MIBA networking events. Um, my wonderful clients, who I've met through networking. Um, and many, many, Heather Rose, Leona Burton, many more women that I have met that have made a difference to me. So my end for 2020 could be many things for all of us this year. It's been a difficult year. But I want to end the year in real gratitude. Gratitude that women kept these meetings going, that there was an opportunity for us to continue doing this online, that there was an opportunity for me to meet more amazing people just through this screen that I'm sitting in front of now. How amazing is that, that this oblong box that's in front of me now has enabled me to continue to build relationships, meet new people and keep my business going. I'm very thankful for some of the things that have happened in 2020. And I think if I exit the year on that note, it will enable me to approach 2021 in a new way. And I hope that you can do the same by just thinking about those few things that I asked you to do earlier on and get this on your plan for 2021 so that you can have an amazing business next year. I will see you in 2021. I will be posting throughout the whole of Christmas. There will be not posts going out every day, but I won't be live again until Tuesday the 5th of January, I think it is. Have a wonderful Christmas. I hope that you are surrounded by love and gratitude, even if you can't see your loved ones. Use this square box, use this screen, be in contact, speak to people and know that you are valued and loved no matter what is happening around you. Thank you for watching me this year. Thank you for tuning in if you've tuned in tonight and I'll see you next year.